announcement that I, is, am I on? Nope. Battery's die again? Must be. Means I don't have to preach today? Nope. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, no, you, I can hear you just fine. Everybody can move up to the front. Do have a voice that carries. I spent years making sure that was no longer the fact. I found out, <laughs> I spent most of my youth and teenage years basically yelling at the world, I seemed like. Uh, <laughs> um, just one quick announcement. If I could have uh, any ad board members that are here just meet briefly after church, there was one thing that I that slipped my mind on Wednesday, so I just need to ask questions. Uh, any other announcements? Yes, party in the park is Saturday, July 31st, and it's from 2 to 4. All right, party in the park, July 31st, 2 to 4 p.m. You trade those in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now, our, our last choir practice is scheduled for next Wednesday. Okay, choir practice next Wednesday, last one for a while? Yes. Okay. We're going to sing through July and we'll take August and starting. Okay. That's the last schedule. I'll have to buy you more batteries, I'm sorry, for hours. Oh.
I'm sorry. I failed. Okay. It's a good thing I just bought a giant pack of them. We have a pack of them. We've gone through them. It's all right. It happens. It slipped my mind. You can't hear me. You probably weren't meant to hear it anyway. Uh, okay. Are there anything else? Any birthdays, anniversaries? Okay. Let's join together in singing our opening hymn, number 77, How Great Thou Art. Oh, my God. 
How about now? Testing, there we go. Look at that. Now we know you're great when it works. <laughs> Welcome to a time of wonder. And a music that calls us home. Welcome to hear God's words that inspire and challenge. And it's a reminder that we are offered holy hospitality. Hospitality that teaches us how to open our lives to others. Leading us to fully live open minds, open hearts, and open doors. Do we have any joys or concerns today? Yes. Um, continue prayer for my sister-in-law and brother-in-law, 
and uh, for Dan's uh, uncle. Okay. Uh, prayers for Todd Boschers again, who uh, was rejoicing at the fact that he spent two weeks on the hospital last Sunday and then went back in on, I think, Tuesday. So he has fluid, had fluid building up around his lungs. He has uh, some building up around his heart also. There's an arrhythmia and so he's... He's online this morning. He's online. Hey, Todd. He's home now. Yes, he's home now. Yes. Yep. Yes, Tim. Um, just continue first for Devin. He's doing a little better. Um, still unconscious, but doing a little better. Okay. Well, they were able to do the surgery this week because it's all bad. Good. Good. Prayers also, you, you know, we've been praying for him a lot, and he continues to need them for my friend Josh, who, let's see, Friday had chest pains all day and went into the hospital on Saturday for observation and tests. I have not heard the results of those yet, um, but Josh is like 41 or 42, so prayers for him. We also have a joy. Speaking of you saying your niece we haven't seen for months, our oldest is coming home for a visit finally. She's been fully vaccinated and she's escaping Chicago and her self isolation. <laughs> she's going to spend some time with us. So we're looking forward to that. Yes? Yeah, Chris mentioned that I look lonely here, sitting here today, and which brought back some memories that four years ago today, that I had lost my wife. Oh, I'm sorry. Otherwise, she would be here with me today. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for the memories. I'm convinced she's here. Yes, I have something else. I would just like prayers for my mom. Mm -hmm. uh, she's uh, having a lot of problems with confusion, and I got her back to see the doctor, and they checked her all over. Physically, mom is doing okay, other than, you know, the 88-year-old aches and pains. Mm -hmm. But he's adjusted her medicine, and so far, so good. She seems to be, some things can't be repaired. Mm -hmm. But she seems to be a little bit calmer. And I'm hoping I can get her back to church, because right. she really enjoyed coming that one day. All right. This be in a time of prayer. We pray today for bishops, pastors, associates in ministry, diaconal ministers, and all the baptized. God, focus our hearts on your will that we might be ready to serve you like Martha and listen at your feet like Mary. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all of creation, that the walls and barriers that divide our lands may be removed, and your people and animals be freed to share your earth with peace and respect for one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We 
We pray for those who have not yet heard the gospel. Empower us with this mission as we live our baptismal vocation in word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who feel forgotten in their suffering or who need your special care, that they might receive your healing touch and know your everlasting peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this congregation that you keep us focused on Jesus Christ, the head of the church, so that we might maintain unity amidst our diversity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who mourn the loss of a loved one. Show us clearly the mystery of life which you have revealed. To all the saints, to all your beloved, through the power of your Son, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's join now together in singing our prayer hymn, number 378, Amazing Grace. I'm singing all six verses. Now let's do, um, yeah, yeah, let's do all six. Okay, great. It's only three stanzas.
Please do not pass your servant by. Please let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will bring you a piece of bread that you may refresh yourselves. After that you may go on since you have visited your servant. And they said, so do as you have said. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah and said quickly, Prepare three measures of fine flour kneaded and baked bread cakes. Abraham also ran to the herd, took a tender and choice calf, and gave it to the servant, and he hurried to prepare it. He took curds and milk and the calf which he had prepared and placed it before them, and he was standing by them under the tree as they ate. The word of God for the people of God. Will you please join with me in the prayer to the Holy Spirit? Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by that same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy your consolations. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So, this week and the next couple weeks here, um, we're kind of inspired by last week's where I read to you a second half, the second half of this chapter, when we were talking about love of neighbor. And uh, this first part, uh, basically brought to mind how how can we mindfully translate uh, past laws and requirements and customs to our modern times? And I will warn you, even as I've been preparing them, I do not have answers yet for all of them. But I thought we might spend a few weeks on some of the bigger examples. And today, the example is hospitality. This is a tradition that arose basically from living a life in a harsh desert, a life that was mostly nomadic. And you had to walk everywhere, no matter where you were going, which, you know, to our modern sensibilities, it just seems a little crazy. And so in the heart of it, this is one of the, this text here is one of the prime examples of where the rules of hospitality came from. And you can see how Abraham 
just escalates everything. I mean, when he when he meets the three strangers, he says, "You know, let me just bring you a little water to wash your feet and a crust of bread. You can rest on the tree, and then you can, you know, visit a little while, and you can go on your way." And what does he do? Make three loaves of bread, kill a calf, roast it, you know, because that took a lot of time, just a short amount of time, right? You hurry up and prepare that. <clears throat> Bring them some curds, bring them some cottage cheese with everything. And if you read into the in the next chapter, when these same three strangers show up at Lot's door in Sodom, Lot takes it to the nth degree, basically keeping their safety above his own families. By offering his daughter to the townspeople rather than the strangers who were visiting. And what's interesting is, despite what we have done with it over time, as we talk about things like the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, Ezekiel points out the, the real reason Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed. And he says that the sin of Sodom was that it was arrogant, it was overfed, and it was unconcerned. It did not help the poor and needy and did not welcome the stranger. And as this tradition of hospitality evolved over time, it had to be included, mostly because while people had to walk everywhere, when you consider the festivals and high holy days, especially in Jerusalem and at the temple, like Passover, there were people from everywhere who needed a place to stay. And part of me wonders if it's kind of like that, that desert living that brings it out in people because... And as I was thinking about this, I was just abashed at how long it's been. 14 years ago, when I went to the Hopi Reservation for a cross-cultural, um, we uh, went to see one of their traditional dances. And it was the first time in since 72 that they had opened up their traditional dances to outsiders to come in and see. And... <clears throat> We were told by our guide uh, to split up and take different routes to go to where the dance was being held because seeing a bunch of white people in a group kind of makes them nervous. <laughs> but if we break up in two to four, maybe it would be all right. And we heard the story of a couple of our friends who had gone through the center of town to get there, and they were stopped on the way and asked if they were staying with anybody and when they said no, they said, well, come on in. And they handed them a plate and said, help yourself. We've got a buffet here. And uh, my friend Ken and I, when, as we were walking, uh, we took kind of the outskirts of the village and we um, came upon a group and they said, and one of the guys says, you guys here to see the dance? And we went, yeah, is, it, is there a good place to go? And he says, yeah, it's over there. Because they don't point with their fingers, they point with their lips. Which took me a moment, I'm like, what the heck is he doing? Is he blowing me a kiss it's over there? <laughs> he says, here, let me just show you. <laughs> and then on the way out, that same guy stops me and uh, says, you guys hungry? Because we've got extras. And then he just la loaded both of our arms down with cakes and pies. That was hospitality, and that was amazing to me. And part of me thought, why? Why is that so amazing? And we'll get to that. Because... We might want to get to the rules that developed, because you'll get a kick out of some of these. The rules that developed with the, uh, the kind of law of hospitality. There were uh, duties that were expected of both hosts and guests. 
So the first rule of being a host was you don't make your guests uncomfortable by either appearing miserable or watching them too closely. <laughs> and part of me thinks, that, you know, that brought to my mind the Mary and Martha story. That maybe what was happening was Martha's complaining about Mary's, you know, not helping was actually making Jesus uncomfortable and that was breaking the rule of hospitality. The second rule for the host was that you serve your guest yourself. So don't ask any of your servants to serve your guests. I know that you all have several like we do. Clearly, that was for the wealthy people. <laughs> uh, the third rule, which I thought was interesting, was don't ask them their name or any personal questions until you, were, you had met their immediate needs. Don't grill them. <laughs> be welcoming, be hospitable. And last, you were to treat them as a family member. Guests, on the other hand, had special duties. They were to show gratitude. At every meal, they were supposed to recite a special blessing that would be said after the meal and for the host. They were expected to leave some food on the plate to show that their need has been met, they've been satisfied. Uh, they were to comply with the host's wishes, and they were forbidden to give food to others without the host's content, consent. So I thought those were interesting. I especially like that part about not making them feel miserable. But the truth of the matter is we live in a different world, right? This is not a desert, clearly as the last week or so has proven. Not to mention the fact that we have cars, we have hotels. There are shelters for people. We are not nomadic. There are insurance issues to consider in our litigious society. And we have a deep distrust of strangers. And we can blame it on whatever the news, movies, whatever. But the fact of the matter is it came from somewhere despite the fact that crime is actually half of what it was per capita than it was in the 60s and 70s. But I bet if I had asked any one of you before this if it was higher now than it was back then, all of you would have said, yes, it is. Especially gun violence. But it's not. You just hear about it more readily. Now, this does not mean to downplay the, the reality that there are dangerous and, you know, disturbed people out there. And sometimes I have struggled with that, especially since I have served five churches and all of them have a lot of empty rooms. Not a judgment, just an observation. Oh, downstairs is empty here, except it's filled with stuff for us. To, some of it's filled with stuff for us to sell, but other than that, the rooms sit empty, unused. And the modern church has tried to translate in some ways, uh, in very self-serving ways, it seems to me, uh, parking lot attendants, greeters, uh, people to point the way to certain things. Uh, this has is a mixed bag. I'm not sure if I've told you this story before, but a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, my first job in a church was as a youth coordinator. 
And uh, I was asked by another youth coordinator in Brighton if uh, I would come in as kind of this social experiment to show for their youth group two different times to church, one looking as shabby as I can. Ooh, and I played that one up. I mean, I woke up just before church. I mean, like, so I just had enough time to get there, so my hair wasn't combed. Uh, I, w I wore a, you know, holy jeans. It was church. It's holy. And I wore a Les Mis shirt that had a tear right there, and I walked in just a couple minutes late, and I was a sight. I was so proud of myself. <laughs> and when I got there, there were no bulletins. And the ushers just kind of said, find a place. And finally, halfway through the service, halfway through the service, somebody handed me a bulletin so I could follow along and know which hymns to sing. And when the time came for church to be over, I went through the line and the pastor couldn't shuffle me along fast enough. Mind you, this is a church that has senators and auto, you know, Ford and Chevy and Dodge executives going to it. So he just couldn't shuffle me through fast enough. I went down to Sunday school. Nobody told me where the coffee and the cookies were. Nobody asked me a question in the middle of Sunday school. And I left completely ignored. I went four weeks later in my only suit, which made me look a little bit like mafiosa, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> took, uh, took Dawn and Tara and newborn Becca. And they couldn't fawn over us enough. I was presentable and I had a family. Yeah. The baby is a big draw. We were told where everything was. We, I mean, we were asked our name by by the pastor. Oh, what's your name? Where are you from? Just one of those interesting type things that when we that all the all the pieces that we that the modern church has put together for hospitality were in place but they were for people that that fit the, the people that they wanted to be there and no other church is any less guilty than that one that one is just the best example because I went through that experiment The other youth director asked me to. Okay. Yeah. And then we gathered both the groups together and I told them what happened. So. Now, just to try to, because again, this is trying to take something out of, out of time and out of context and bring it into a modern era. I, basically, I kind of came up with three things about hospitality that might be translatable to now. First is that hospitality is free to the guest. Second, that hospitality is to be as generous as possible by the host. Combine those two together and you might just have one term, hospitality is expensive. And the third, is that it is a requirement, a blessing, which the rabbis said was better than even welcoming the presence of God in your home. And it is a joy, which is why you shouldn't act miserable around your guests. And there are other considerations to take uh, take in that there's you know this is hospitality is not something that even back then was an everyday occurrence but you should be ready for it and especially in modern times there's always a hidden cost in these things right which is probably my weakest point you know I'm you've heard of people you can't see the forest for the trees I can't see the trees for the forest okay I, I can I can say hey look forest and everybody's gonna say what about that tree it's dying oh I missed that one just not a details person <laughs> I 
But that doesn't leave me without ideas on this one. Some things that maybe we can consider. And I have also learned over time that not all of my ideas are good ideas. I have also learned that not all of my ideas are bad ideas either. <laughs> but only here, just let me offer these up, but also to have you just kind of think about these things as you go out about uh, how you would translate these things into the world. I'm just kind of thinking of us as a church. Uh, the first thing that popped in my mind was the food pantry. We're wondering what to do with the food that's in there. What if we had a big party for the town? What if we used it for party in the park? What if we used whatever we had until you know, it was gone for a regular thing? Yes? Oh well, that the, giveaway table. The, all the, stuff we're giving away. the dance that I went to was one where everybody had to bring something to donate. Well, this you'll love this story. And, and halfway through the dance, the the dancers would bring all of the stuff out in sacks, and they just kind of start throwing it out to everybody, kind of showing the abundance of the community together and supporting each other. And I was surprised to have a loaf of bread thrown right to me, like right off the bat. And I was just kind of looking around and watching, and another loaf of head, bread beat me right in the head. <laughs> I'm looking around. And the, the, here's the sad part, is that like around me was a hush. Like, oh, how is he going to react? And so, you know, I, I, I have loved self-deprecating humor, as you have all learned. And so I just laughed, and you could just like kind of hear this collective sigh, like, oh, good, the white man didn't want to kill us. So. <laughs> I would have said, well, I'm grateful. Thank you, God, that it wasn't a tomato. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's something like that. Or, you know, these are just the things that popped into my head. Um, I, we don't get them all the time, but, you know, welcome wagon baskets for new residents. Uh, I know, which, you know, there are details. Like I said, I'm not a detail person, but, you know, there are details that would have to be attended to. These are just things. <laughs> um, we are on the Great Northern Hiking Trail, which runs from Georgia all the way up to North Dakota. Yeah. Really? yeah. The church is. Yeah. Oh, story. Yeah. And uh, what was it, two, three years ago? Yeah, we had those. We thought they were homeless. There, there were people walking the trail. Uh, Amber and Mover. Yep, Amber and Mover. And uh, they, but they came through, and that was we had like they said, that, you know, a huge storm is predicted. Can we stay here? And I'm like, well, the church is the town storm shelter. If you don't mind, you know, we don't have a lot, but I can probably grab you a pillow and blankets and something. You can sleep on the floor. We had them over. They took a shower. We fed them a couple times. But, you know, what if we set up, you know, kind of a hostile-type situation for people on the trail? Again, there are details, and I know one of them is insurance, which drives me crazy, but it's a reality in our modern world. How do we translate these? These are things that we, that I think it would be interesting for us to struggle with. Yeah, but I have a sign once you figure out the insurance, hostile for hikers. <laughs> or just put it, you know, contact the trail managers and let them know and have it written in their oh, information. Rooms, yeah, well, set up. well, you know, there are other things that might require the in installation of a shower downstairs. Yeah. Do do we want to take those costs? So these are these are just questions that I'm just spitballing here, as they say. Or run up the flagpole, see who salutes it. You know, that kind of thing. Any other cliche you can think of? No, but there's, you know, well, yeah, there's one. Yeah, there is. Yeah. What is the bathroom consistent? Oh, the, the toilet is like. The there you go. <laughs> but then, you know, this, the, this is just the, like I said, I'm spitballing. You know, how do we bring the idea, the biblical idea of hospitality into a modern world so that we can be faithful to it? That isn't some way that's self-serving. Because it's not supposed to be self-serving. If anything, it's, you know, by the fact that it's free to the guest and 
is supposed to be as you know abundant as we can provide from ourselves, it's expensive. And we're small. But these are things that I wonder. You know, even if we, even if our plans are for a little water to wash their feet and a crust of bread and a little bit of shade, but it ends up being a fatted calf, three loaves of bread, and some cottage cheese, you know, there might be days where both are the extent of our abilities. So, meditate on that. Think about that. What does hospitality to the stranger and the sojourner and the traveler look like to us in this modern day? And I'd be interested to hear your answers. Amen. Amen. Let's join our closing song number 395, Take Time to Be Holy.
program daily.